Bobby, will you count us down? I'm going to do the intro and then we'll... All right, 20, 19, <laughs> all right, all right. 18, all right, I'm just gonna go. 17, 3, 2, 1, go. Welcome to another episode of RTAF. Thank you for being here. Shout outs for watching the YouTube video. Uh, please remember to subscribe and uh, tell all your friends about us. Remember to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. And um, yeah, thanks for hanging out. We re really appreciate y'all being here. Uh, one little bit of news is we've got a new t-shirt and hoodie design. Uh, the link for that will be up in the description and we'll flash it on the screen here too. But uh, it's motif, M-O-T-E-E-F-E dot com slash artsy dash af spell that one more time all right and so today's guest is the legendary <laughs> deep thinker eloquent speaker brilliant artist one of my best buds bobby cruz what's up buddy not much thanks for having me man yeah dude uh how'd you like your intro that was great do you have any notes no i think you nailed it okay yeah, you forgot Wizard, but that's okay. Well, you know, if anyone listened to your podcast the first time, this is your return. This is your return, by the way. Return of the Jedi. Return, Bobby Cruz to Return of the Wizard Sleeves. Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> They're but, rolled up now. Yeah, they are. Rolled up. He's getting to work. So what have you been up to, man? <laughs> Mad chilling. <laughs> yeah. Really hard, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Back out in Denver, which is cool. Yeah. Feels like home. Even though it's like, I've actually never lived in Denver. This is my first time living in Denver. Right, because you were living like up in the mountains. Yeah, I first moved uh, to Lakewood, um, mm -hmm. which I don't it's like Lakewood. It's sort of Denver. It's, it's just, the, it's too much in between, you know, and, I, and my thought was like, go closer to the mountains, but not right in the city. And I ended up just kind of in, in no man's land. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, so it's cool to be in Denver and it's kind of weird to be here i think in the pan while the pandemic's going on because it's still kind of you know more or less i could be anywhere and kind of do the same thing so i've just been sure. in the studio and just kind of kind of laying low so nice. but it's nice it's nice to be here and be close to friends and everybody nice yeah how have you been dealing with the pandemic uh <laughs> <laughs> besides freaking out i mean I, yeah well, I know we all had like that stage of like oh shit well, like I think like for me, done. when it started out, when when actually like the stay at home orders came, like I was up in the Redwoods and oh, I was traveling around with a friend just like in a van. Yeah. And so that was kind of like weird to start at first. It felt, you know, like a good spot to be because we're like away from people. But it was just kind of a weird time. Like, uh, like I remember Oregon was closing down their national forests and um and we were in Northern California. So it's kind of like, okay, well, wh when, when are we going to get closed out of the forest? We kind of got to figure out like, where are we going to go? You yeah. Know? What and if you were just trapped in the forest all of quarantine been... and then like the, you still thought it was going on like oh. 30 years later? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Walk out, it's the world. Okay. Everyone's <laughs> like, what are you talking about? It's been Dude, fine for 29 and a half years. <laughs> Sorry. But, uh, no, no, not at all. But no, it was good. I, I think, um, I've gone through kind of several waves, I think. Like mm -hmm. we we initially went down to uh, to Joshua Tree and stayed down there, which is pretty secluded. And that's where I was living previously. Right. And um, but yeah, it was very secluded and we just made art and hung out and smoked a lot of weed and it was <laughs> great. And but it's kind of like to me, it always reminded me of having like, you know, you're you're like 17 years old and just kind of naive but you're like oh i'm brave and like i the world is just so great and people are awesome and then you kind of grow up and you realize that there are like these like truths to the world that you didn't really know and there is sure. like a lot of things that we all need to work on collectively but i remember having this thought you know i was like oh my god this is potentially a great thing for everyone to like learn how to come together and i had this thought of you know people looking their fellow humans in the eye after this and being like wow we made it through that together you yeah. know and kind of funny months later it's not necessarily the case at all right, but yeah, yeah. i think in a lot of ways it, it it has strengthened a lot of bonds in sure in the bonds that were already there and i guess i was more hopeful it would create more New bonds, bonds that weren't there yeah you know yeah. and it's, it seems to have kind of created a further uh division uh which is kind of tough and yeah um yeah. but at the same time sometimes like 
it is it is necessary to have like that like opposing force to like realize that there is things that we need to actually work on like, right. collectively you right. know and i feel there were a lot of like truths in in this country you know that like a lot of people knew but it didn't seem it wasn't surface level it was like sure. kind of like suppressed it was a little bit buried right. and now it's all on the surface yeah and so and and when you're when you're like going through work on an individual level like psychological work totally you have to bring all that shit to the surface to yeah. like kind of clear it out and like yeah, see gotta it. acknowledge it and i think i think social media like uh you know it just demands participation and it exposes everybody's best and worst totally faults or yeah. like or traits or whatever yeah and yeah i mean i I really hope that this is like turns out to be a good thing. Yeah. Uh, but it's kind of tough right now, you know? Yeah. It, it's, it's hard to see that. And even, you know, the, the whole social media thing, it, it connects everybody, but it also like it, it puts a lot out on the table and, and it's tough to see that, you know, and, it, and some days, you know, I remember at the start of it, you know, it's like, you got to go on the internet in the morning and read the, and the news. Yeah. yeah. And you yeah. see, and you're like, Oh my God, these cases have gone up and all this, you know? And it, it was, wild i've never experienced anything like this you know right. and for for me you know there's there's been these big moments of change you know and and obviously you know 9 11 was was i think the second biggest one in our lifetime yeah um and i was in fourth grade when that happened so it was you know like i i definitely was aware of it and and i understood and i kind of had right. a little bit more insight even into Afghanistan and, and everything, yeah. which I'll talk about that in a second. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was just interesting. It's like, th there's these kind of shifts that happen. And I feel like that was a really big one. Um, and I couldn't imagine being, you know, like the age I am now when nine 11 happened, because it's, it's hard not to experience a lot of emotion and to, to push blame onto people and all this, when there's so many moving parts that it's like, you can't really just, nail no one, it down no one has like a, a yeah, full view of the totally the it's like it's literally a collective thing that has like built up over time and and that's where i feel like we're at now it's like these things have been going on forever it's not new and you know you look at a lot of, of other countries like in japan you know people are sick they're gonna put on a mask right. they just do it nobody tells right. them to do it right and this isn't even about like you know a, a mask versus no mask debate it's just right things it happen in certain yeah. ways yeah, in, yeah. in other places and and for us in our country i feel like we've created a lot of like individualism you know and and i think the the things that are happening in our country now are are creating that that more of a, a collective compassion between people and not everybody but i think that the right people are are treating this the right way and and utilizing it and for me it's been huge just like even hanging out with you we haven't seen each other in, right. in a long time it's been and really freaking long yeah and i remember we we were about to hang out and i was like oh my god no this is weird like i don't know like yeah you, you, you had a little anxiety a about it yeah for sure. and, and and so i i guess my takeaway from that is it's created more intentional settings where if right. i see people I know that me seeing people is potentially exposing me or somebody else to, you know, this virus. And right. um, so it's finding that level of, you know, like being smart, being safe. But also it's like if you're going to see people make it count, you yeah, know, and totally. you're and not just like hanging out and yeah and just to do that being aloof while yeah. you're doing it or whatever. Yeah, because it's like, like oh, I got it. nothing better to do. Why not? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? yeah. And, and I think that's like a, a big thing, you know, it's like the people that I have been seeing or, or, you know, it just, it feels, it feels like there's more weight to that and it feels more meaningful and hopefully strengthening those bonds, you know, sure. which is nice. Yeah. So have you been making more art? Like has the art production gone up or? or it's, I think now, like the past couple of weeks it has, yeah. um, it started out, I was extremely productive at the beginning of it. All I was I doing was, was, was painting. Yeah. And um, I, like I said, I was in Joshua Tree and pretty much converted this, you know, shed in the backyard into like a studio and there was nothing in there. It was just carpet, walls, and that's it. And mm -hmm. a broken fan. And... <laughs> So all I did was paint and like take walks and stuff and I didn't really go go anywhere. So I was really productive at the start. And I think that kind of like faded out a little bit when I when I came back to Denver and um, moving spaces and trying to set up another studio. And while all this is going on and, you know, it was tough and it was 
kind of around the time when all these protests were happening and it was just, it was heavy. It was very heavy, you know, yeah. and, and trying to find your place in that is kind of tough and it can feel a little bit like defeating at some times where you're, totally. you're like, I'm what I, so you I just make pictures. Do. I just yeah, like, yeah. while the world's burning, I just sit here and I'll just make a picture, you yeah. know? And, and it seems silly, but at the other end, it's like, yeah, totally. Yeah. It, it's totally what you're going to do because that's what you feel called to do and to bring thought in, in to beauty, you know, and, mm -hmm. and to the things that are there. And, and you're creating something. You're totally. like, it's like something actionable that, regardless of what's going on like you're being creative i think is super important yeah like n not enough people are like that totally and you know if you have all this energy pent up and you're not getting it out in some productive way like eventually it'll turn destructive maybe, totally you know? yeah and and then self-defeating that it's right it's a tough thing and i've seen it and i've experienced it like in myself too and and i think um you know it's just like struggle with identity you know mm -hmm. where i'm i'm a person and i'm more than just an artist and that is like a part of me but i am not just that as right. well and, right. and so i think that can kind of create this weird feedback loop of you know if you feel like you are an artist, but you're not producing, then you're not an artist. And so you've removed most of your identity and what you're left with is, is you just have no idea. You don't right. know what these things are, what these little pieces or what they all mean. And, um, but yeah, like you said, having that outlet, having that some sort of creative outlet, I think is so important, you know, and, mm -hmm. and for me, and, and especially, you know, I'd say like the past month or so, um, I've been a lot more, um, focus you know mm -hmm. i feel like before it's like I, I i was painting pretty much every day but sometimes you know i'd paint an hour and then i'd get distracted and then i'm yeah. somewhere else you know in my head for hours right. after that yeah um but lately it's been a lot more dedicated sessions and a lot more um I don't know, finding more, more flow in there too, you mm -hmm. know, cause it's, it's tough. And I think a lot of the way I, I paint is very based on just like this in the moment thing where I'm not, I'm not in the past and I'm not like thinking too far ahead. Right. But if you're, you're on somewhere else, edge. somewhere yeah. else, yeah. you know, and you're trying to be in the moment and creating, it's hard because you're distracted and there's so much going on and, and I don't know, it's weird. I, I had, you know, this conversation the other day about, I think we actually talked about it in the first episode too, about, yeah. you know, survival and reproduction as, uh, you know, a biological function right. and that guiding most things. And sure. I feel like as an artist or as a human, we have these creative drives, you know? And, and um, so, yeah, it's just interesting that on some level, you know, it's like you talk about non-essential workers mm -hmm. and- Artists are some of the least essential out there, but on the other hand, I'd argue that they're the most essential right. in a lot of ways. Right. We definitely talked about this in the in the first podcast, but like, can you imagine the world without art? Exactly, and that's like, the whole you thought. Have, you know? Like, you wouldn't have really anything. You wouldn't have houses. They might be like brick Badass or like ergonomical chairs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They might be like mud huts or yeah. something instead of a house. You wouldn't have food that even really. No one would care about taste. Yeah, with food. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You just yeah. I need just basic these things. amino acids and X amount of protein, and I'm good. And so you just eat the things, but it's <laughs> right. that's not fun. It'd just be know? like a pill or something. Yeah, you yeah, know? exactly. And there's definitely days where yeah, that would be great. You yeah, know? sometimes like, if you're like in a hurry trying yeah. to get things going, blend, blend the cheeseburger and drink it. You know, <laughs> yeah. easy. You know, good to go. Yeah. But, How's your smoothie game these days? You know. I could do better. Yeah. I could be doing I, better. I saw you all have a Nutribullet over there. I yeah. Saw some. Oh, yeah. That's my shit. It's good. We, um, the smoothie game last night was milkshakes. So, oh, okay. Let's see how I we're mean, living. That's a, a dessert smoothie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's good. Nice. Um, so yeah, I want to circle back around to like being productive, like this whole idea of being productive. I think it's important to be, a little easy on yourself sometimes totally when you're not when you're not just cranking work out yeah you know because there is this essential part of being creative where it's like maybe the last wave has crashed or there's something crazy going on in the world and you have to sort of like let the wave go in and then it sort of pulls back out and yeah. that pulling back out like 
you kind of sit and you marinate and then you build up enough momentum and, and internal energy to get the next wave going. yeah totally you know? and it's cool and it's like that retreat it's like soaking up like the inspiration and um yeah finding like whether it's new subject matter or just whatever you're you're there to express you know mm-hmm. and i've i've kind of had those struggles i think too and especially with everything going on because i i paint very abstract you know and and the meanings for me aren't necessarily the meanings for everybody else. So it's like, if I'm trying to portray like a powerful message, it can get lost easier, you know? And it's not as explicit. Yeah. Yeah, And, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's just, it's how, it's how it is. Like I'm not, I don't feel the need to learn how to paint subject matter just to portray, you know, what I'm trying to say. And, and I think that that had kind of struggled with the, the production level of, you know, where it's like, well, what, what am I making? You know, if, if my creations are there to help me level my emotions and to, for me to like understand myself and my place in the world better, then what does that mean for other people? You know, and, and at what point is the art for me or is it for everybody else as well? Right. Right. You know, and, um, and I think that there's, it's a mixture of all of it, you know, but, um, I, I just, I think personally, I think that we do need just more beauty in this world. And I think that there's a lot of people making a lot of different types of art that says a lot. And lately I've just been inspired kind of by like flowers, you know, a lot and, and not necessarily painting them, but just flowers as like a symbol of beauty, Mm -hmm. you know? And I think that's what most people think of. That's why you buy your significant other flowers. It's like saying, Hey, I love you. You're, you're you're like this flower, you know, you're a gorgeous thing that is like enticing and grows and people want them and it smells good and it feels nice, (laughs) you know? And so if I could make that, like, that's awesome. I think the world needs that, you know? And, and I think it needs all of it because there's people out there, you know, that, that make dark art or there's people that make art that isn't necessarily dark, but the subject matter isn't necessarily just all light and and right. sunshine and everything. And, totally. and that's also important too. Um, so it's, yeah, it's interesting just finding your place in this world where it seems like art is simultaneously like the most meaningful thing and, and the me- most meaningless thing, you know, because right. you yeah. can't eat it. If the world literally was ending yeah i can't eat my paintings they're firewood the most that it would do is is i could heat you could keep heat myself yourself. with yeah, it yeah. you know and it's kind of ironic but at the same time how many experiences has the world gone through that the people living there felt like that was the end and there was still art everywhere it's yeah. been around since the beginning of humanity so i think right. there is a reason that like when when shit hits the fan like the people that are diving into their own subconsciousness and and psyche are pulling out things, you know, that are so necessary to the to survival share. of humanity, yeah. you know, because it's not humanity isn't necessarily just humans being alive, you know, right. it's a lot that comes with it. And and to me, that's that, that creative force, you know, yeah. of, of going past biological functions and trying to create community and, and love and comfort and sacrifice and helping others, you know, that go beyond yourself. You know, I think that's where, where we end up with, you know, totally. That's a great point. Um, so you've been doing, you've kind of, we've talked a lot about like writing and novels yeah. and like stories. Definitely. Lately. Every, like when we've talked on the phone. Yeah. Um, so have you been writing any? I, yeah, I've been more doing writing exercises. Um, I guess getting your chops backing up. up. Yeah. So I, I, when I was in high school, I think actually it probably started when I was in like the eighth grade, mm-hmm. and I had a a teacher of mine that was a soccer coach as well, and so him and I knew each other outside of school, and we're more or less we were friends. You know, like we were homies outside yeah, of yeah. of class, and I remember wanting to. Um, to do like the AP English or whatever going into my freshman year. And I remember him kind of being like, Hey, really think about it though. Think about if, if, you know, that's what you need or, or it wasn't like he was necessarily, uh, discouraging me. He was also saying, Hey, you, you don't necessarily apply yourself that much. You're (laughs) smart, but like, if you're going to do AP English, you really need to, you got to step it up essentially. And, and that always stuck with me because it was, it was just an interesting thing. I was like, oh, I want to write. I want to be a writer. I love writing. I love doing all these exercises. And then somebody being like, oh, well, 
really think about it. Yeah, and, yeah. and so it's like, oh God, okay, <laughs> uh, maybe I will think about it. And, um, and even into taking the SAT, ACT, one of those things, mm -hmm. one of my lowest scores was the writing. And I, right. and I, and this was like at a time where I was pretty set on like, I wanted to be an author. I wanted to write stories, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's funny that this, you know, standardized test is being like, no, you're not a good writer. <laughs> um, which to me was kind of ironic. And I got, I got like a 32 in the math, which, really? yeah. I'm not, Damn, I wasn't that good at math. We, were, we we did opposite on the ACT or whatever. You did really good in the writing? Oh, and yeah. I crushed the writing. Weird. But super the math, strange. I was like, I just, I was so bitter about math. I just re reverse engineered all the equations. I didn't know how to do trigonometry or any of this stuff, but I would do things backwards and take the answers and plug it back in and see if you get the first part. Like, so I essentially just cheated my way through <laughs> it. And they're like, wow, good job. You know your math, but you're writing. You yeah. Know? Mm. And, um, but I think that that's really cool. And I think that especially those two, you know, even thinking back, cause I don't think about those moments all the time, you know, the eighth grade or the ACT or whatever, right, you know, yeah. and, and it's kind of, it's, it's ironic. It's like, kind of like the institution being like, no, you're not doing it the right way, you know, you're not and, doing it the way that we yeah, have decided. Cause you read the, the right thing way. and then you write the thing based purely on the information. There's no room for creatively connecting right, right, things. Right. They don't want to see that. They want you to, and, to and sometimes to get a, like a, a piece of writing across. It does have to be like, a short novel or a long essay. Yeah, totally. Right. And, um, but then I guess going on the other side of that, I had a teacher in high school, uh, Dave Bowen, um, Shouts. and hopefully he'll listen to this cause he's an amazing person. But, um, he was, he's somebody that was not an easy teacher, but like the best teacher to have. And you ask him questions and he would answer you with another question. So mm -hmm. he would never just give you answers, but like help you kind of like guide through them on your own totally and um but i remember i i had a class of his that i failed because i didn't apply myself fully you know yeah funny but um <laughs> one of one of the one of my favorite things i ever wrote before it was a short story but the assignment was to write an essay comparing and contrasting religion and science talking yeah, yeah. about the differences and maybe where they meet in the middle and instead I just wrote a story and he loved it. And I got, you know, hundred percent on it. And it was not, I didn't do the assignment at all. I didn't feel like doing the assignment. It sounded boring. Like yeah. I don't want to write an essay. I want to write a story. Yeah. And I, and I think that kind of tied into how I feel about stories in general. You know, it's like you read books. I always read books. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily know why it's just something you do. It's like maybe an escape or, it's just something to pass the time. Well, I think like storytelling is the oldest art form. Most it's likely. the original art. You know, totally. Like, totally. Obviously painting and, and music are, are right around there too. But like stories like have like codes in them for like how you should live your life. And they're like a virtual representation of what might happen yeah. if you do X, Y, and Z. Totally. It, through and it creates, you know. and that's what we're talking about with humanity, I right. think, because you're able to pass these stories down. So I can I can relive somebody else's life in, right. a, in a very small way. Right. But if you connect with them, you experience what they're experiencing without actually having to go through it. Right. And so it kind of creates this like collective consciousness that we've just kept going on over time. Mm -hmm. And... I've always been big on fiction and specifically, I guess, like certain types of fiction, you know, but uh, like I grew up reading Harry Potter a lot and there's tons yeah. of stuff you can pull from Harry Potter. Is that your favorite book? No. <laughs> Growing well, up, I mean, definitely. My, I mean, my, some people it is even into like adulthood and everything. But. Oh, definitely not knocking it. I mean, it's, it's up great. there. It's, it's up there. Great yeah. story. Phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, my favorite story is probably Ender's Game. And that oh, was nice. Um, nice. when I read that book, I was backpacking in New Mexico and just head in the book, walking through some of those beautiful landscape. <laughs> and I couldn't put this thing down. It was yeah, just, yeah. oh my God, I read it in a day, just mm -hmm. straight while hiking. It was the weirdest thing. And, but it was just so good. And, and that kind of, I, I guess some of the other experiences that I've had with books and just with thought and with writing itself is that there, there's a lot of hidden messages within that. Exactly. You know? And so as much as fiction isn't real, at some point, if somebody's passing down a story from a friend of a friend of a friend, right? How much more real is that? Yeah, you know, because like, you it, didn't experience it, you don't know if that person experienced it, and you don't know on what level 
the the story has changed over time. Right. And so at the end of the day, these people are all telling very similar stories, yeah. you know, and it's the subject matter is different. And I think that's a huge takeaway is that people experience very, very similar things. And so you could know right. somebody that is completely different to you, different occupation, different age, different country, and they can understand things that you're going through because they went through something similar, or at the right. very least, maybe they were on the other end of of what you're going through and they were the ones that caused that. So they have more compassion, you right. know? Yeah. Um, so it's interesting, but I think, uh, yeah, I always, I always wanted to write, I think for that reason, I felt like my first art form was thought, like conscious thought sure, and yeah. just being able to like connect things in your brain or, or, you know, to have like a dream and yeah. to be able to, to see that that dream is trying to tell you something, mm -hmm. you know, and that's your own brain just talking, just talking to itself. Yeah. And, um, it's just reflecting upon itself. Yeah, and yeah. and essentially that's all writing is, you yeah. know. And and so I've been trying to get back more into it. I think once I discovered painting, it felt like abstract writing. Yeah, and I loved that because, like what we were saying earlier, it's like I don't have to necessarily explain what these things mean. Right. I don't yeah. have to tell somebody why a flower is beautiful. I just have right. to show them the flower. Right. And they come up with their own conclusion, or mm -hmm. maybe they're like, "Oh, that's I don't like that. That attracts right. bugs, and I don't like bugs, so I don't want the flower." Right. But somebody else looks and they're like, "Flowers are amazing, and I want them around all the time." Right. You know, and so they get it. It's a symbol. Right. You know? Everybody kind of takes takes away from art like their own consciousness you know? totally or like they project their own thoughts onto whatever it is and that's totally. the interesting thing about uh just images you know like because like a story is kind of like it is what it is yeah but a painting like the way that you paint it's like i like your new stuff a lot by the way thank you man. and we'll uh we'll bring it up uh somehow in the video yeah to show people a couple examples of your work but like the way you're talking about like it being a flower you're you're taking the most essential parts of a flower like the soft colors yeah and like some curvy lines yeah and and you're placing it in this composition and it's like a deconstructed flower totally kind of, an abstract right yeah and and so like a good story a good novel is taking it's 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 pulling like all the stories of all time totally and distilling them down into an abstract pattern and just you know kind of like placing characters in that pattern yeah to like work to, to help guide it yeah 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 well and it's and it's cool too and i think pretty much everything we're describing is sort of um the ultimate goal and so it's it's weird you know it's weird to say oh yeah i'm writing a book right now <laughs> what a weird thing because at some yeah. point this shit might take me 10 years to yeah. do or it might never happen yeah but sure. at the same time like having this thing like just these thoughts it's like it's good to put them into something you know and, and right. at the end of the day it's like thinking about writing you know it's it's something i think everybody should do i don't think everyone should write a book because that just seems crazy a yeah. little bit but yeah. um but i i've kind of had these these ideas just brewing for for years now you know and it kind of like has culminated into uh, a story about stories you know and it's yeah. about a, a person who kind of lives in this world that only certain people dream not everybody has dreams mm -hmm. and everyone that dreams has their dreams are real experiences that people have had before so it kind of ties into this collective consciousness and mm -hmm. storytelling yeah and the fact that at the end of the day fiction doesn't exist because these things on some level have happened whether or not you know for en ender's game for example right sci-fi it takes place in space and there's like these battle stations and all this stuff and it's completely fictional but the the pull aways the things that you get from what these characters are going through is absolutely real and everybody yeah. experiences these every day and so it's kind of like my thought is to remove like the word fiction from this society and and to place the weight that we place on on our political and religious leaders to towards storytellers yeah so these people are there you know in in the in this story in this world kind of in our world i'd say as well too right as timekeepers you know as a way to say hey 
people experienced this. They've done this before. Yeah. We've been here and I just lived it. Yeah. And I'm here to tell you what it was like and how we can either avoid this or get to where we need to go, you know? And, yeah. um, and so it's cool. And, and I think personally for my mind, I go on tangents a lot. Yeah, and yeah. and I'm sure everyone listening to this, you, you're, I'm taking you're you on tangents, for the ride. you know. And yeah. so the the story is about a um, like the main character is he experiences these stories kind of like more fragmented, and everyone else, you know, it's like you go have a dream and you come back and you tell the elders or whatever, hey, I had this dream, this is what happened, and then you kind of sit around and say, hey, this is what this means, you know, and and this character kind of, he just experiences things just and doesn't really know what's going on, and it ends up at the end of it all just kind of like making sense, and it's just like subconscious kind of like ride, and, yeah. and, I, and that's how I feel kind of when I'm painting, you know, it's like my brain's just sort of talking to itself. And it's I, like problem solving, yeah. you know, like in a in a good story like in probably most good paintings like you come to a point where like you've solved one problem and then another one spontaneously arises probably because of the way you solved the last problem totally you know? yeah it's all that stuff's really interesting um, yeah we so we were also talking about um like time and memory earlier. yeah like when did you move to Colorado? Like we couldn't figure it out. Like yeah, it was like 2014 or 15. 15 yeah. yeah. But it's know. weird and it's and to me it's an interesting thing because thinking of what year it is for some reason seems like a bigger thing than it is. It feels important to know right, what right. year, but at the end of the day I still have all these memories of like when I came to Colorado or like what happened in 2015. And I might not know that it happened between these arbitrary numbers, but right, for right. some reason as like a person, we like put this weight Just on, on time. It like yeah. 2015 or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. And, and that does vibe. at some point it was like it happened and it wasn't in my immediate time surrounding. So mm -hmm. at some point it's meaningless when it happened, it just, it happened, you know, right. and it's shaped shaped me in some ways you know to be where i'm at now but yeah time man time is <laughs> a weird thing yeah it's just weird i i always find it weird that i can remember something so vividly from like 2003 or something totally and then like it takes me a long time to kind of remember like mundane things like yeah, breakfast from three days ago. Yeah, breakfast from two days ago or my address from like three houses ago. Yeah. Like I know what street. I don't remember the number. Or the, or zip, the zip code. code. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's weird. But it's it's funny the, the things that do stick. And I always, I think about that a lot too. It's like the way that we associate certain things with memories. That becomes the thing that's well, it's like, stronger. It's like stronger emotion, right? Yeah. Typically. Or like maybe from our perspective now, if there's something we're remembering from the past, we just look back at it and be like, oh, yeah, good old days or well, whatever. Like, for example, one memory that I have that is more or less like one of my earliest memories, but the most kind of meaningless, it, nothing nothing happened, but I remember it so vividly. I was at a, a car dealership playing Miss Pac-Man. <laughs> and, and then I remember there was like a little popcorn machine and I had like a thing of popcorn that they gave me. And then I remember going home and we had, you know, a plastic like playground setup thing and there was a blue slide and I remember I fell and I hit my face on the blue slide and a little piece of popcorn came out of my mouth onto the slide and I thought it was my tooth and it was just popcorn yeah, yeah. but like why the hell do I remember that well, I was like probably, four years old it's probably like your first experience of uh like understanding popcorn. that the how human <laughs> how fragile the human body is right? totally yeah it's like oh my god i chipped my tooth and it's like oh no it's, no, popcorn. No, it's popcorn that's popcorn. funny okay tight. and <laughs> yeah but it's just so interesting but i think the association of that just being an early memory is enough that i won't ever forget it because yeah, yeah. it's just something random that pops in my head or like what we were talking about earlier my first conscious thought that i had i was constipated I had a <laughs> suppository pill oh, to like damn. help me out. It was like terrible. And then I remember sitting on the toilet thinking, 
why am I in this body? Why did I come in into here? And right, I couldn't right. fully like, cause I was four or five years old. I was pretty young and I couldn't fully even express that to even talk to my parents or anything about it. But, it, but it was, I remember having that thought. I'm like, why am I me? Why was I put into this body and not to somebody else's body? And when I look at them, they don't know what's going on inside of here. All they see is just me like this right. vessel, but inside of my head, there's this entire goddamn universe right. you know that like i don't even understand yet but i'm like acknowledging it right and, and just, i'll never forget that either it's i don't know yeah that's pretty crazy to think about it's a good thing to keep in mind too when like we try and reduce people down to whatever it is their race or political affiliation totally. or whatever however people do all that bullshit is that like the person that you're looking at and judging is like a lot like you and they're a lot not like you and totally. there's tons of just like information and emotion totally inside there yeah it's a, it's literally like a, a hurricane storm like inside yeah. and not in a destructive way but there's just so much going on and there's so many moving parts and and things that they don't even realize you know with subconscious things and, and things that they had dealt with growing up that shaped them into who they are yeah. and all of this is constantly going on inside of people's heads and I, nobody acknowledges not nobody but a lot of people don't acknowledge it you know it's like somebody's having a tough day yeah and it's hard to not look at that person and be like oh they're being a grump or they're right, right. that person's boring or whatever right, you know yeah. and it's like not not realizing that there is just so much inside of everybody's head that isn't necessarily getting let out or, or shown you know so you, you can't fully know somebody in right that, in that sense right yeah man that's a good point so i've been uh i've been meditating like every day yeah and like kind of the goal there, if there is any goal, there's not exactly a goal. It's like to there's to, a, there's things happen. There's though, things, so yeah. There's things that you can do. It's basically what it is is like it's training. Like you know how we all have a blind spot. Yeah. And but we don't realize we have a blind spot until someone is like, "Here's In your blind spot. spot. Now yeah. do the the finger thing." <laughs> And so like, that's basically what meditation is, but it's, it's doing the blind spot is this feeling of like the self in the head. Yeah. So like this feeling that like, I am a self, uh, like, you know, thinking these thoughts, but really it's just thoughts just come up. Yeah. They're just there. They're just, yeah. There. It's not like we really choose them, you know? Totally. I don't know. My, my brain likes to remind me of that a lot. Um, yeah. in, in certain situations it's like it kind of plays tricks on you you know mm -hmm. and and i've experienced it uh while meditating too where it's almost it's like kind of cheeky in a way where it's just like oh you're trying to concentrate yeah. how's that going like yeah, yeah. How, how are you like you can't concentrate it's yeah, all it's, this it's like the the intention of, of one like either state of mind or even like to try and think about a form implies the very opposite of it yeah totally you know? yeah it's like don't think of giraffe yeah, yeah everyone's exactly. thinking of a draft right or like if you think of the ocean you automatically think of the land yeah you know um oh yeah that's interesting yeah i don't yeah. know we went on a little tangent there but like that's good just like thinking about um consciousness you know yeah <laughs> um do you ever have talks like this with like your parents um i want to have my dad on here one day sometimes you know like what i feel like one of the first really awesome conversations I had um, with my parents, not the first, but like the first where I felt like we were talking to each other on like a friend level rather yeah, than yeah. I'm her son type thing. Um, I was in high school and my parents worked till five pretty much every day. So I could guarantee them being home five thirty six yeah, or yeah. whatever. So yeah. it's like I get off school at two 30 and smoking weed out back nice. and my mom came home early and, <sighs> and it was just like, Oh God. And I had never like, I was sneaky, you know, yeah. I never got caught really doing anything. And that was one of the, the first times, you know, and it was, and I was just so stoned, you know, and I was telling <laughs> yeah. my mom, Oh, this is my first time. I don't really, I don't really feel anything. I don't know what the hype is. I'm just blazed, you know? And, and, um, <laughs> but rather than being upset, my mom ended up just, we just talked, you know, and she nice. told me all these stories, you know, about when she was younger and, you know, when she was in, in college and different experiences that she had, um, like in, in her own love life, you know, and, and, 
um, I guess it's an amazing story, so I'll tell it. But yeah. um, she was was with a man before my dad, uh, years before. And I think it was, I want to say it was New Year's, something like that. And, mm-hmm. and he had been going through a lot and struggling and he was, you know, kind of depressed, didn't know what was wrong with him. And so he was seeing a therapist and um, turns out that he was gay. And oh. so him and his therapist had been working through this. And so he pretty much like came to my mom and he had a, an engagement ring and he said, this was supposed to be your engagement Whoa. ring, but like, I'm, I'm gay and I can't be with you anymore. Right. And shouts to therapy because yeah. I wouldn't exist yeah, exactly, without therapy. Dude. I'm not, I'm not born. So right. awesome. But yeah, just really wild. But to, to connect on that level was, was really awesome, you know, cause I was 16 or something at that point. It's crazy how those little things well, that's a pretty big thing, I guess. But yeah. like happenstance, basically. The fact that that guy had enough wherewithal to go to a therapist because he's like, something's wrong. Yeah, let's figure And like this probably out. in the 70s, like therapy wasn't like normalized yeah, so totally, much. Yeah, totally. And it's like if you went to therapy, you were real messed up. Yeah, that's like, yeah. Uh, don't tell. And then know, nowadays he, we acknowledge that everyone is real messed yeah, up anyway. Exactly. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but like just something like that changed, you know, just changes the whole course of, of what totally. happens. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and that's always been something that I've had mad appreciation. Cause it's like, okay, so you think about, you know, growing up near death experiences or something where you're just like, oh, if th- that almost happened where like, I might not even be alive today. Or like you almost drown in a pool when you're six or something. Yeah, that happened to me. But you sure. don't think about that. <laughs> Did that? When I was three, I like jumped into my grandfather's pool all my relatives were around like yeah. watching me and I didn't have like swimmies on. And I was like, yeah, I like jumped into the deep end and they were all like, I wonder if he can swim. No, he can't. Well, let's go get him. Yeah. <laughs> and, and like, but that's something like had people not been around or whatever, right. you don't know what happened. Right. Right. But, but to me that experience with my mom just goes to show how close all of us were to like never even existing. Yeah, totally. You it's, know? And, yeah. It blows my mind that we even, are in like the range of this size of star and yeah. like have water and that the one celled organisms turned into the billion celled organisms. And then we can sit here and talk about it right, too. Exactly. My absolutely mind blowing, but it, it really like that gave me a lot of appreciation just for life, you know, cause yeah. I don't, I didn't think about that a lot. And especially being that young, you know, it's like your parents are your parents and you think about when they took you on vacation, but you don't right. think about like the that fact that they were 16, yeah. 17, getting their hearts broken and learning and and being like, is this the love of my life or am I supposed to do something different, you know, and that every choice that they're making is affecting everything in the future, right? you know? And it's not to say that, you know, had, had he not, gone to therapy and my mom and dad never met that like I wouldn't exist as I am because that's a whole different philosophical yeah, debate right, but I right. wouldn't be me I wouldn't be Bobby you wouldn't sure. have the same experiences totally yeah. and and so in a way like I wouldn't be the same you know yeah. at all but yeah so it's just interesting but it really um I don't know and that that definitely strengthened my my bond between my mom and I I feel like yeah and and I wonder too you know it's it's always funny to me these little stories of you know, things that happened in high school that I would have hid from my parents that now I can talk about, you know, right. sneaking out of the house or, you know, army crawling like back into the house while my mom's like on the couch watching TV and sneaking past her, you know, yeah. and I would have got grounded or whatever right, right. for that, you know, right. but nowadays it's something we can just laugh at. So I think um, it kind of opens up more dialogue, I believe, like with, uh, with my parents, which is yeah. really awesome. And, um, and cause that's tough. I can't imagine being a parent. I can't imagine seeing your kid being in college and then also being like, no, I want to be a painter. And then knowing right. that like they're broke as shit and, <laughs> and like doing things, not the way that you had like pictured it. You Could know? you imagine being a parent and then like your kid having a podcast and then like, I want to call my dad today. Yeah. Should we call You my should dad? give him a call, dude. Yeah. I don't know. Let's see how this goes. We can like maybe edit it out if it, if it's weird, he might not even answer. It's worth but yeah, so the the reason I brought this up is because we'll at least show this. Um, there's this really hilarious um, thing that Molly sent me today. Shouts, Shouts Molly, Molly Gardner, uh, and it's we'll we'll put it up here. But it says uh, it's like this really tacky hoodie, and it, it's just got weed leaves and like a kind of like you know a Day of the Dead looking skull on it, 
and the back of the jacket says, we dad, fat pot leaf. And then it says, like a regular dad, but, but higher. higher. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, man. So, um, yeah, I've got a dad and I'm going to call him and ask him if he smokes weed. Let's see how this goes. Hell yeah. <laughs> this is called the scientific method. Yeah. We have a hypothesis. I hypothesize your dad probably smokes weed sometimes. I think sometimes. <laughs> I'm going to ask him like memories about me too. Yeah. Like. When did you get caught smoking weed? <laughs> yeah. Did you? Yeah. Well, yeah. not caught, caught, but like. You smell like pot, Drew. Yeah, yeah. Drew. <laughs> I don't think he's going to answer. Andrew didn't become Andrew until he turned 26 years old. 21. 21. Legal Andrew. Hi, this is John. All right. Hi, John. Um, anyway, maybe next time. But yeah, I just wanted to bring that up. Uh, just see if we could get him on the phone. Yeah. Honestly. Yeah. But yeah, man. Um, so how much time we got? We got a few more minutes for sure. Definitely. Um, what else did I want to ask you about? Who knows? Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So... The last time we talked, you hadn't like you you were talking about how you wanted to use spray paint. Yeah. Right? Yeah, definitely. And so I've noticed you've been using it a lot more. Yeah. Well, and that's kind of nice too, because I, I feel when I first was using spray paint, and especially right around the time as that podcast, I it was it was new to me. It's something I was very interested in, but I had no knowledge of it. And right. Since then, I've had people reach out that have heard the podcast and have like asked me about spray paint and stuff. And it and it's kind of it was always kind of humorous to me because I have no idea what the hell I'm doing with it. So right, yeah, it's kind of funny. And and I feel like that was the point. Where I was like, oh, it's new. And you, oh. That's okay. And you can like glaze with it and do all these different things. But I had no um, no skills or or honestly, a lot of it is is the confidence that that mm -hmm. I've realized and. Um, so that was, yeah, over a year ago. And, and I'd say probably about March of this year, I started getting into it a lot more. Um, I was hanging out with, uh, Kevin who goes by Ross soul and yeah, yeah. Megan Walker. Um, and they're both very talented spray paint artists, muralists, and, and just designers in general. And I was up in, in Northern California with the both of them and, just playing around with spray paint. And and I remember Kevin showed me a, a fade and I guess we got videos where like, instead of, you know, holding the can like this, you hold it that way against the wall and you can kind of go up and down and it creates a sharp line yeah. and then kind of like a, a faded out. It kind of like the, the edge of that other side of the line sort of spits. Yeah. Spray yeah. Paint like it, it like hazes over it. And that just like blew my mind. And ever since then, I've just, I've been obsessed with the the stroke of it. It feels like this samurai type dance. And yeah. what it, what it's kind of led me into is, um, and something that I had posted about with a piece that I, I made, you know, a few days ago is finding this level of confidence, you know, with the strokes. And I feel like a lot of times when I paint, it's like you, I'm, creating this container and then kind of waiting for something to happen in it, you know? Right. And, and it's like, I don't know. It's like, if we were to do this podcast and, you know, it's like we sit down it's like, okay, well we have all the things now. What do we do? <laughs> right. What do we say now? It's like, you know, yeah, it's like, how and, do we talk? Yeah. I mean, and and that so still it, happens sometimes. As, yeah. Like, but, uh, but on some level you just, you, you kind of like, you're like, okay, well I'm going to start talking about this thing right? because like, this is what I want to talk about. And I'm going to keep going with this until we end up somewhere else, you know, yeah, and, and yeah, there's, yeah. there's a certain level of, of confidence and flow that happens there. And, and I feel a lot of times it's like, I, I wait for, for things to appear. I wait to see things in this like chaos that I've like created. Right. And lately I've been trying to like be the one that's like wielding the chaos rather than just letting things happen for whatever and then right. making something out of it to like be the one that's guiding that or at least like at the very least walking with it and not yeah, yeah. following behind and kind of cleaning up and tidying right, right. and so it created a certain level of confidence and and I really do at least in my life and I'm sure most artists can relate like my creative process and my art is very similar to how I live my life sure and so I notice a lot of these parallels of of just yes building self-confidence and knowing that you're capable at the very least of learning how to 
get on the path to doing something. It's sure. not to say that like, I think that I can master anything, you know, I think, but with enough thought and, and artful practice, you can, you can be on the path to learning whatever it is you want to learn. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I felt that with, with spray paint a lot, there's, um, you know, if you're too close to the wall or if you stay in one spot too long, the paint builds up and it drips. Right. And the drips are cool, but to me that it, it, it signifies a lack of, of confidence. You didn't yeah. go oh, quick yeah. enough. You right. didn't, you, you didn't move, you hesitated. Right. Yeah. And, and totally. I've never experienced that with painting with, with brushes and, and right. just with acrylic paint, you can always shape things and shift, yeah. but, but with spray, it's this different level of trying to just get things perfect in this like first pass over it. And it's all about the stroke. It's yeah. literally just about, it's about the, the way your arm moves and it's, it's, like coming back out and going back in creates different effects with it mm -hmm. that it, it becomes a, a three-dimensional dance yeah. process. Whereas when I paint with a brush, it's an emulating a three-dimensional dance. It's fake. It's on right. canvas and There's... I can pretend to go into it and come out, but it's not the same. It's not the same type of dance, you know? So it's, I think there's a lot to learn kind of with both, but I, I think, um, you know, and I think that's something that people should experience with art too, because right. a lot of what holds people back is they either don't know what to do, they lack confidence or they lack motivation, you know? Right. And, and so if you put paint and a canvas in front of somebody, they have no reason not to do anything to it because they have the materials. It's right, right there. If they have the time, what's stopping you, you know? Right. And, um, and it's not to say that just, yeah, go into it with 100% confidence right away because you're going to know exactly what to do, but it's something that builds over time that right. you know. And I've experienced that in my own art, you know, where I believe it was when I moved to Winter Park and I just decided I was going to be a better painter. And yeah, all yeah. of a sudden I was a better painter. Do you, do you think that you changed first, like with the way you're describing how you paint now, yeah, like wielding the chaos. Do you think that you changed as a person first or that like you wanted to change your style of art and then that therefore like reflect it back on your personality? Interesting. Yeah. See, I think it's simultaneously both, yeah, you yeah. know, I think, um, and that's always been really hard to, to nail down, like where does style come from, you know, and where sure. does, why do you do things the way that you do? Why yeah. do you walk the way that you do? Some people are very like straight and they walk and their heels touch first. Uh -huh. Some people drag their feet and their shoulders are slouched. Like there's yeah. reasons or, or just, that's just how you've always done it, you right. know? And so I think, um, yeah, kind of simultaneously. And, and I think it's, it's been a process that has built over the years and it just, something finally clicked, you know, and, and sure. within, I'd say the past month or so for myself of just understanding that I can. Yeah. And, and that was always my biggest thing. I, I've been very flow based and I love just putting paint on the canvas and just making a mess. Yeah. And I think a lot of times it's, it's hard because you make a mess and then you're like, okay, now what do I do? How right. do I turn this into a finished product? Yeah. And I think after you've kind of experienced it enough and painted enough paintings, you know that you can do that. You're right. like, I know I can make a painting because I've made a painting before. Right. So now I know that if I'm doing whatever feels right in the moment, right. I know that eventually I can like lead this down the path to becoming a full piece of art. Right. And that's the level of confidence you have to build. And, and for years, you know, I would get a piece to a certain level. And I always like, I always joke with myself, I would turn it into like a little valley, a little mountain valley yeah, yeah. or like a little river running through it. And it, it was like, it just felt like such a cop out to myself. And it's not to say that there's anything inherently wrong with valleys or rivers or whatever, right. but, but when you're trying, on yeah, like it's that. like, oh, yeah. okay, I'm not good enough to see this through the quarter finish stage. So I have to kind of like reshape this to make it something that I feel like I could work with, you know, mm -hmm. whereas had I had the confidence I have now, I would have been a lot further ahead sure. at, at that time, sure, you know, yeah, yeah. and, but also I was never, I was never a painter. I just started painting, you right, know, right. And, and so I was shit at it for a long time. <laughs> and, and in a lot of ways, like I'm still learning. Mm -hmm. I like just sure. learned the other day how to like 
make cleaner lines. You know, I've been painting for like eight or nine years now at this point, And now I'm learning how to make a clean finished painting. And it's like, oh my God, I feel like a little kid sometimes where I'm well, just that's... like, wow, that's how you do that thing. That's how you make a cube. Yeah. Is you draw a little goddamn cube. You so, know? so, uh, do you think you, you took some of what you learned through the spray paint and translated it back into brush? Um, I think conceptually yes not yeah, not like not the directly. actual subject matter of what i'm painting because right. they feel very different and i think that's what i really enjoy about the sprays it's just right. it's different it creates different information yeah and for somebody like me that's very um my flow is better than my design that's what i always say sure. my intuition is smarter than if i were to sit there and place all the elements and try to create something my intuition will do it better and that's always been a really nice thing, I think, for myself, because I don't have to think or try too hard. It's sure. just knowing that, like, if I do the things, I'll end up somewhere, right. you know? Yeah. And um, But I think what the spray paint taught me is, you know, it's the same way if you do yoga, you're not just, you don't just do a pose and then you do another pose. Like, you're breathing into everything. Every right. movement, yeah, yeah. every breath has meaning. And that's what spray paint has taught me. You're not just doing anything for You're no fucking, fucking reason. Yeah. 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 And so it's, th there's a, like I was saying that dance to it, it feels like a, a samurai movement. Um, Got to give shouts to Seth McMahon. I feel like he's, he always was somebody that inspired me to pay attention to it, what you can do with a single stroke. Yep. And so he'll do th these pieces that are like, you know, based on the single flow that he'll do. And then he'll go in for hours just, making everything like making all the angles work better highlights and shadows but he's not changing much he's not really like blending really totally so much. I yeah mean, he, he does blend but like when he makes a line he makes a he's making the line, line and yeah. he's thinking about what he's doing or not thinking and just creating it, it. Right, yeah right. and so that's that's what um, but it's that confidence you were talking about yeah it's, it's like, like if you're gonna do the stroke you here. do the stroke you yeah. don't kind of like you're like oh is this straight and you kind of like make it crooked admit, and then it gets drips it and it's and it's not even and so that's something that i think is is very admirable about you know spray paint artists and a lot of these street and graffiti artists that are just it's it's a definitely like a spiritual dance that I think it goes far beyond painting, you know. Totally. And, and there's well, some. It's also out in the public. Right? Yeah, yeah, and totally. Like, so it's this very special thing that like you're sharing with people you'll never meet. Totally. So I mean, I guess art's kind of like that anyway. Yeah, but, but in a public space, it's it's there's something it's more there it, for yeah. everybody. You right. know, like we're we're in an art museum right now. Yes. And there's tons of art around. But if you don't come to this art museum, you'll never see this art. Yes. And but if you walk around Denver anywhere, there's murals all over the place and people are exposed to art. Yeah. In all in all different, you know. A lot that MOA is sponsored too. Awesome. Yeah. Props so, to them. Shouts. MOA. And and I think also too, like there's color cons going on right now. There's these like yeah. mural festivals going on. And, you know, we haven't had, you know, live painting experiences this year but i've always thought that that is just such a beautiful experience for people to be able to see people the making art. art yeah because to me the making of the art is is what i love about it mm -hmm. and i uh, and i've always felt that there's pieces that i that not many i can think of two one of them i gifted away so there's one piece right now that i i don't think i would ever sell unless somebody offered me an obscene amount of money that I'd be an idiot not to right. take, you yeah, know, yeah, but yeah. there's certain pieces that are just, they're more meaningful to me than to have them be somewhere else. But I'd right. say 99% of everything I make, as soon as I finish it, it's ready. It's right. ready to go. Sure. And I've gotten my journey with it. And, and so for me, it's always about, it's about that journey about the process. and not the destination, you know, yeah. and, and some people, so the way I look at it, I create a piece, I go on this journey, I have this meditation, I have this, you know, internal monologue with myself about what I'm going through and how that relates to like what I'm going through with the painting or whatever it is. Right. And so when I finished it, I've, I've gone through this subconscious process of, whatever it is I need to do, whatever, you know, it's like my own therapy sessions in a way with myself, you know? Mm -hmm. And when I'm finished with it, I have a product that somebody else can take and they could go on their own journey with it. So they have this piece that I'm already, I've already 
I'm already done with it. You know, it's right. ready for its home. It's ready to be out there in the world. And these people can have that piece of art and look at it. And hopefully it stirs some sort of subconscious thought process that they get to go through what I went through creating it right. just by having it on their wall. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful, you know, just allowing everybody to have that journey and, and these mural festivals and a lot of live art at festivals to, to show people the process to say, Hey, it's not just, you don't just shit out this beautiful thing. It's right. like, there's so many different ways of like reshaping stuff or like, you know, these big broad strokes that like anybody could do. I feel like sure. half of my paintings, a three-year-old could start them for me <laughs> and I could take it and do what I do with it right. and make it look nice, you know? And, and so I think it gives people that level of confidence that they can be like, oh, I can do this. Yeah. And now all they need to do is find the materials and the motivation. Yeah. And it's just the it. logistics after that. Totally. Basically. And practice. Yeah. Yeah. And, but I think that's like, and that's everything. Cause it's, you, I was terrible at painting. I was absolutely terrible at painting when I first started. I was too. And um, I have some of your older, like a couple of prints of your yeah. older stuff. Love it. The little mushroom elf men and the, the snake. And yeah. The, yeah, yeah, yeah I know the, exactly. And the which foot. One. Yeah, the foot. Yeah. But um, <laughs> but yeah, and I, I, I do think that there is something beautiful in that, you know, and and I think, you know, we were talking earlier about, you know, like me coming on here. I'm a lot less nervous now than I was the first time. Right. But the first time I was, I was very nervous. Didn't to, sound like it, by the way. Right. Which and everyone it is whether or not they admit it. You know? Yeah. Like, but some people, I think they use those nerves better. You right, know, sure, if your sure, heart sure. rate goes up and your adrenaline spiked because you're nervous, if you're able to harness that, you're going to crush it. And that's yeah, yeah. where you have rock stars and right. and these like or like very eloquent, you know. Uh, public speakers and yeah. these people that can get up there and Comedians. say exactly what they're trying to say um, without letting any of their other emotions or fears or whatever get in the way. And right. um, and I think that art can be a huge, huge, huge motivator for people to find um, their voice or their confidence or whatever. And and um, yeah, I guess that's that's my huge takeaway. Just the past few months, it's like, oh, of course I can make a really clean, really nice painting. I've right. been painting for nine years. I should be able to, you know. Right, and right. and now I think just having done that a few times, it's it's a lot easier to be able to know that I will be able to do that again and again yeah. and again. So it's I just think the more that you do it, the the better and easier, and totally more relaxed you can be within yourself. And totally, the expression comes quicker and just like with ease yeah and hopefully that like you imprint that on your art or whatever it is you do enough to where other people can pick that up totally yeah, yeah. but yeah man um let's see so we're gonna do a visionary haiku okay definitely because we were talking about writing and you can just uh just dump a fair amount out on the table what's a fair amount uh, um two-thirds i don't I'd know say. Well, yeah, yeah, that's good. Make sure there's some, you know, big words, small words, and a haiku, as I'm sure you know. 575, baby. 575. Speaking of five, V. V, oh, nice. Wow, nice. Shout out to uh, Latin, or sorry, Roman numerals. They spoke Latin. The numerals were Roman. Did you get psychedelic? No, that's enlightenment. I think we've used that. Here. Paramind. Paramind? Yeah, nice. Paradigm. Paramind dime. Well, this is this is great. I, I know, love right? that it's I, just ness. I like, think like, you know, um, this'll work better with some guests like you. Where we have, you know, we lit. we've collaborated on several paintings, so I think um a uh, fridge magnet haiku will be pretty easy. I actually do have a suggestion for the ones that like don't. It's like you could just, I mean, because this is typically what the visionary magnets are for. It's like just a funny sentence. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It doesn't necessarily have to be a haiku. But right. Maybe haiku is a little like. Just for some guests. Bob yeah. is going to crush it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I dropped one. Hang on. Look out. Man, I'm kind of bummed my dad didn't uh, didn't answer. He's going to be really bummed too. What? He will. Oh, wait. He called back. Calm. This is the perfect time. This is the perfect time to call yeah. my dad back. He And his text says, regret missing your call. Regret missing your call. <laughs> All right. Here we go. <laughs> it 
So usually what we do is we trade off words. Oh, okay. So, oh, we're collaborating on but this. But yeah, yeah. But hang on, hang on. Ego Galactic. Hi, this is John. Jeez. I bet he's going to regret missing that call again. Yeah. Too. Yeah. Oh. All right. Well, I'll keep my phone uh, face up this time in case he calls back. I love how Dude. Taco is. Come smell. <laughs> Come smell. Yeah, just two. But I just Taco. thought that, you know, like, come over here. Smell. All right, so just pick just pick one word. Well, I oh, got I got on, we on, literally. On. My dad's calling. Oh hell yeah! All right, all right. Hey, Dad, you're on the podcast. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> you're you live his, on the air. He, it, well, you're not live, but uh, you had to get your broadcast. Oh, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you had to get your broadcast voice ready, right? Uh, well, yeah. Um. So. I just thought so. I want. I'm gonna send you a pretty, a pretty fun, cool uh, gift. Um, we can just call it an early Christmas present. But um, you know how you smoke weed sometimes. Do I? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, like who's gonna be listening? Just to every this? now and then. Yes, it's yes. a well. It's like a real classy, um, like jacket, and it. I don't know. You're you're gonna love it. Um, uh, I certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so, so what's the podcast about? I'm just talking to Bobby, Bobby Cruz. Okay. And we're just we're you know we're just riffing basically. Um, okay. So I wanted to ask you, um, what? When did you know I was going to be an artist? Am I being recorded? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, was it like twenty five? You're like, there's kind of no way out. Well, define artist. Ah. Uh, As a living or. No, just like you're like this kid. This kid, he's got talent. He's you know, he's he could be a champ. Uh, the the DNA and heart picture. Oh, okay, nice, sweet. Because it showed, you know, creativity and you were new. Yeah, I was new. It was probably, what, what 22, maybe? Yeah. But, well, the... the no, no, I think was, I was... Why, no. how, did, how did this... Where did this come from? That's, you know, people said, oh, well, did he always like to draw and paint? <laughs> no, uh, not really. He could, when I was a kid, you know. He did, but, you know, it wasn't like anything he gravitated too. Same. And, nice. Um, so yeah. Well, cool. Yeah. Thank you for uh, for that insight there. Appreciate it. Oh, I, I'm I'm full of insights. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm gonna let you go. Thanks. Love you. All right. Take care. All right. Bye. bye. <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah, uh, that's pretty random, am I right? On the air. <laughs> am I on the air? Yeah. So I have we literally. Okay. Just as the start, because it's we nice... literally. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's a good sentence. Got a line. We literally. Because that could go literally any direction. It's we like literally. It's like all we have so far is just we, and a very definitive something leading into this is what we do. We literally. So I'm going to do a line. Yeah. Okay, cool. Oh, you, I we love it. Literally. Um, <laughs> I need to find, do you have an R over there? A-R-E. I have to. I mean, he's got to have something like I that. I have er. Uh. <laughs> and the how. No R. I have ellipses though. Okay, okay, okay. I've got something. I've got something. Let's do it. Mike. Yeah, Mike check. Um 
the seed. We literally. I'm just gonna put down smell. Let's see if you got something on. Okay. That. We literally smell. The end. Done. Great episode. <laughs> we literally smell ellipses. <laughs> That's, Does that count as a syllable? No, that's not a syllable. That that's just okay. helps you read it. Read it. Okay. We literally smell psychedelic. Psychedelic. That's four. So that's smell. five total for the line. Yeah. Smell. Smell is two. Smell. No. Smell's, smell's one. one. <laughs> smell. Smell. Wool. Was this on the SATs? <laughs> it's always been hard. They te- they teach yeah. you the every time the the smell. Psychedelic. Smell like the we need air two. comes out. We need two. We literally smell psychedelic or smell <laughs> psychedelic. Um, um, we smell. We literally we smell our psychedelic. Yeah, there we go. No, that's 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 seven. You're already at six because four. Oh, okay. Is four. We well, f- literally, we literally is the first line, so that's five. Yeah. We literally smell psychedelic. So we're at five. Psychedelic. <laughs> this is great content. Is that five or four? It's five. This is, is a, this is psychedelic debate here. We're we're getting. We're we going literally in. smell so psychedelic. Psychedelic, um, or. So now we need one more syllable or um, or chi. All right. With next word, next line. Bobby Cruz. Pouring this is way better than over writing. words. Pouring over words. He's got a tough decision to make. Which one will I go with? Get near the mic, Bobby. We need your we need D. All the things you say. We literally smell psychedelic or chi. Maybe when. when. Yeah, I was looking for like a with or a when. Um, when life is lit. Oh, life shut up. Is lit. Is that, oh is my that God, he's, he's, putting, he's putting it together. Yeah. Do you got an is? Oh, we can just do life's. <laughs> Does that I'd, make two? I don't think that makes two. Life's. 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 Oh, wait. This might <laughs> This might be a... Life's is just one. Life's is just one. We yeah. need an is. We need an is. <laughs> oh, here's it. Here's an is. I came in with the assist there. This podcast is a mess. Life is lit. We need two. When our... Life is lit. I think I when have your hour. yeah. Here's an hour. Okay, that's good. When. Oh, okay. We literally smell psychedelic or chi. Say our life is lit. Say, Say our it. life is lit. Our life is lit. Nice. All right. I wish there was quotation marks. Should we should we quote that back again? So we literally smell psychedelic or chi say, say our life is lit. Our life is lit. And then it ends with our life is lit. Yeah. True. Yeah. That's Very also true. true. All right. Well, Head, thanks so much, Bobby. V heady. V heady. Yeah. Let's <laughs> always nice to end it with V heady. Thanks so much, dude. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Love you. High five. <sighs> Please subscribe and follow and tell your friends about it and, you know, just share it. You can get on Spotify and you can click share and I'll share it right to your Instagram stories. And you'll be like, man, our life is lit. You can even say that. You could give away the ending. Talk about our visionary haiku. But thank you guys for listening. Uh, Don't forget to check out our new t-shirts. And we'll see you next week. Peace. Later. Later.